comes again. Hi, I'm James Hollywood Machikari. Join me Monday through Friday for more Psycho Mayhem Morning Show on YouTube Live, Facebook, and all major podcasting platforms where we talk about all the major biker news going on in the scene. Rock on! It's Tuesday, baby. Welcome to Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem. How are you guys doing? How is your week starting off? Mine's doing pretty good, man. Getting a lot of excitement about uh, next year's ride that Insane Throttle is going to be throwing. Rumble in the woods, baby. Going old school. Going old school. You'll be getting a lot of information on that stuff coming out. All throughout the year, man. It's going to take a lot of planning. We are, we got already people coming from other states wanting to meet up with other people right in, which is rocking and rolling, baby. Rocking and rolling. Uh, today, oh my goodness gracious, Indian, you are done kicking ass, baby. Holy cow, Indian Motorcycles, Polaris. Now that's the way a company takes the freaking balls, man, of the competitor. <laughs> you know, Harley Davidson, they based everything last year on the release of the live wire, thinking that was going to save the numbers. Well, it didn't uh, do so good. What am I saying? It flopped. It flopped right on its face. $30,000 for an electric bike. You're kidding me. You are screwed up in the head. So, what does Polaris do? What did they do? Come on, tell me. Well, they went and signed a deal with zero motorcycles. Yes, zero. Zero motorcycles is the leader's. In the electric bike market and now whoo, getting in bed with Polaris making some moves baby and where's Harley Davidson at well you're always messing with Harley Davidson you know what for you know, a couple things here a couple things on that you know I mess with them because I'd like to see them do better and for somebody to do better you got to ride their nuts well that don't seem to be happening they put a shoe salesman, Al Bundy, in charge of the company. And then I believe their CFO is a broad from uh, Tyson Foods. Yep, that's how you run a motorcycle company. Something iconic like Harley Davidson. You put in control of a shoe salesman just because he turned around Puma doesn't mean you're going to turn around Harley Davidson, boy. There ain't no damn way. I don't believe you're going to. I think you're just going to take it downhill. Downhill, man. Uh, you are getting, I don't know, you are getting into uh, the off-road. But the problem is, those that are in the off-road lifestyle don't like Harley Davidson. So what makes you think they're going to buy it? Especially for the price you want, man. Holy cow, are you crazy? So they're working on that one. They're dropping a bunch of lines uh, for their 2021, man. They haven't even brought it out. And Indians already brought out their 2021 models. And I got to say, whoo, baby. Indian looking good there, son. Looking good. But hey, we don't know what's going on with Harley Davidson's 2021 uh, lineup. I don't know what's going on over there. All I do know is they're cutting the labor force. They're cutting uh, models off their things. They call it the hardwire plan. <laughs> or we wire, or whatever you want to call it. I know it don't sound good. And it's sad news, man. You know, you want to see an iconic company like that do good, but just not doing it for us, man. Just not doing it for us. There's been a lot of suggestions, and I actually would like to see this. They need to go retro. 
Now, what I mean by retro, look what the Ford Boss Mustang came out. You had the Camaro and all that. Uh, you had the Charger come out. The automakers reached in their bag of goodies from the past, pulled it out, modernized it, and look at the sales that they seen. Now, can anybody, and I'm not talking about the SS motors, okay? I'm talking about a full production Maybe a knucklehead one year, or a shovelhead the next, or a panhead the next. Get back to basics, Harley. Them bikes would put your sails through the damn roof. You have an old shovelhead modernized, or you have that panhead, you're going to see the dough. Big time. But will they listen is the thing. They don't listen to their customers. And that is a sad state of affairs. If you don't listen to your customers, what usually happens is you fall flat on your face. I could guarantee if they came out with a panhead priced around seventeen, eighteen thousand dollars $18,000, you know, with all the upgrades with modern technology... I bet they would have a situation like they did in 94 where you had to be put on a waiting list to get a motorcycle. That's how confident I am if they do something like that. Go retro, I say. Yeah, you know, putting in there for the Pan American and all that stuff. I just don't see it. So why waste the money on it? Especially when you're not too well liked in the off-road uh, you know scene and put it into a retro I say do a 2021 or it'll probably take two years so 2022 special edition fully producted panhead motor yep bring them back that's what I say you know how much uh, money people are spending for pen, uh, panhead motors right now just the old ones, man. Could you imagine the market that Harley Davidson could capture if they got back into the way things were? Now I get it. You guys love these big ass uh, engines with uh, all these CCs coming off of the, you know, the production floor. But I say get back to basics. You know, get back to it, man. So big thing going on with players, and we're going to be covered in that in the news coming up also we got the trial of the century it seems going on over in oz with the common cheryls i guess the case just was handed to the jury so we're gonna see how that all comes up man that's been popping up everywhere man it's like an oj symptom case over here in the united states they just memorized over there in oz about all this going on uh it, to me it's like okay it's another club trial but uh to the general public man they got their popcorn going got their milk duds out got the coca-cola going yeah, they just standing in front of that TV. Whoever's uh, carrying it's probably got some damn good ratings, man. Let me tell you, damn good ratings. Uh, then we're going to go into, uh, of course, some good stuff that a club's doing, which most of the time they really don't get uh, that much uh, attention for doing good. And then, of course, uh, the wall of shame with Corey Graff. I do want to remind you, there's a link in this description box if you're on YouTube or even on uh, Apple Podcasts or Spotify. It is the Hollywood and China Dial Show's uh, YouTube page, or you can watch it, you know, listen to it on the radio. But boy, oh boy, is China Dial going, man, on them. Uh, she's doing video blogs like I started, and, you know... I started the video box because guys like seeing me away from the studio, which I actually like doing it because uh, the studio gets cramped, especially after putting all the soundproofing in. Oh, my God. It's like 
hello hello i don't get nothing back man that's how quiet it is in here so it's good to get out so my video blogs are wednesday saturday and sundays and china doll is the same way over on the other channel uh wednesday saturdays and sundays but boy you might as well just call her dr freaking ruth she comes up with some doozies baby some doozies it's like i sit back i just say what did you just do well, you know, I wanted to talk about this, and, you know, men have a trouble uh, satisfying women, so I figure I'll show them how to do it. I'm like, okay, rock on, man. You just go over to your corner there, Dr. Ruth, and get going. So don't forget to go over there and subscribe and all that good stuff. So let's get going into the Biker News, shall we? Hey guys, Carrie here from Biker Syndicate Cycles. Just to let you know about the place that has the craziest hats on the market. Apparel that's based all upon bikers, baggers, and brotherhood. And ladies, we didn't forget about you either. Between tank tops and baby doll tees, we have it all. Now just go to BaggerSyndicateCycles.com and check it out. Get your most unbiased and trusted biker news now at HarleyLiberty.com. Founded in 2012, Insane Throttle Biker News has been the place that all bikers come for what's happening in the scene. Go over now and bookmark HarleyLiberty.com. Rock on. A lot of stuff. Oh, well, this is New Zealand. Don't ever, ever mix up New Zealand and Australia. They will bitch, moan, uh, scream, yell at you, call you all kinds of nasty names. I get it all the time. I am sorry. My geography sucks. It sucks. I wasn't at school that day when they were talking about Australia and New Zealand. Sorry. Give me a bike. <laughs> anyway, it's now up to a jury of 12 to decide whether they think the president of the Common Chero Motorcycle Gang and another man conspired to deal drugs. After more than four weeks, yeah, a four-week trial, man, I told you, this is like O.J. Simpson, except that lasted all summer. And man, if the glove don't fit, you must have quit. You remember that? Jesus Christ. Oh, my God, that was just a setup, man, just a setup. Uh, the trial against uh, the president, I am Nafua, Hua, Hua, you know, something like that. Uh, it, let's just call him Paisel, okay? Because uh, Nafua, Hua, it's like, you know, you're doing some dance, you're like Indian or something. Uh, Connor Michael Tamati Clausen and a woman with name suspren uh, suppression, suppression, dummy. See, that's what I hate with my, you know, I try to hide the Chicago accent all the time, and it just screws me up. One of these days, I'll do a whole show in a Chicago accent. You guys would be like, what? Yeah, it's not good for the radio. That's why, you know, I know on YouTube it's one thing, but the radio is different. Uh, wrapped up on Monday with Justice Graham Lang summing up the case to the jury. Well, why is a judge doing it? I thought that's the prosecutor and the defense attorney that sums it up. It's different over there, I guess. The trio were arrested following a series of raids across Auckland in April of 2019 in which more than $3.7 million in assets were seized along with luxury cars, motorbikes, high-end luggage, and jewelry. $3.7 million. Now, foo hoo hoo is charged. Nafua, fua, fua is charged with uh, money laundering in relation to the purchase of a Bentley and a Ford Ranger. Ford Ranger ain't, uh, you know, a luxury here, but it might be there. Who knows? He is also charged alongside Clawson with conspiring to supply uh, pseudomethadrine or pseudoephedrine, whatever the hell it is, what they call it. Why do you guys have different spellings? You guys speak English. Why do you got different spellings than the United States? Oh, yeah, that's right. You're under English. The woman uh, faces one representative charge of laundering $292,000, which the Crown say was used to purchase vehicles on behalf of gang members. See, they, uh, they spell up members, M-E-M-E-B-R-S. 
You're confusing us, uh, you know, Yankees over here, man. Justice Lang said the trial involved allegations of drugs, gangs, large quantities of cash, and luxury vehicles. But the jury should not draw any adverse inferences or prejudice against the defendants. Well, isn't that nice of him to say? It was up to the Crown to prove the charges to the jury beyond a reasonable doubt, he said. Justice Lang told the jurors they were now the sole judges of the facts before releasing them to deliberate the, a verdict on each charge. No credible evidence! Early on Monday, Nafusa Rufa lawyer Ron Mansfield said his client had been painted as a demon! But he is not a drug dealer, despite the police's best efforts to pin him as one. Mansfield said police were obsessed with Nafua Fua Fua, despite the woeful state of the evidence. Well, that is because the Crown knows, despite the best endeavors of the New Zealand police force for over a year, there was no direct evidence of Nafua Fua Fua being involved in drug dealing activity here or abroad. No drugs were found after the searches in 2019. Nafua Fua and his family were charged 20 or subject to 24 7 surveillance with Cameron positioned at the end of their driveway, but no drug dealing activity had been captured. The court has previously heard that there were a number of trusts set up and various banks accounts were used to allegedly launder money to then purchase luxury cars and property. Now Fua Fua previously admitted funds that were used to purchase his home and some vehicles were laundered through lawyer Andrew Sims, a convicted drug dealer. The Crown's case is that cash was deposited into his wife's account, which was then used to pay for the Ford Ranger, despite her not declaring any income during that time. However, Mansfield said there was no evidence the vehicle was purchased with laundered money. You know, you can get a Ford Ranger over here in the States. Uh, let's see here, probably about five, six thousand dollars $6,000. Here's what you do in New Zealand. If you want a bike, or you want a truck or something like that, look it up over here in the United States and we'll broker one over there for you, man. Cut all the costs, I say. Know what I mean? <laughs> However, Mansfield, which is uh, Nofua Fua's attorney, said there was no evidence the vehicle was purchased with laundered money. Over the course of the trial, the court heard hours of intercepted calls between Nafua Fua and other associates including a convicted drug dealer at the heart of the case. He was observed during the police covert operation, meaning with Nafua Fua on multiple occasions. There you go. There you go. That is the trial of the century for the common charles over there in New Zealand, not to be mistaken with Australia. Now! Here we go. We're going to start our coverage of Polaris, baby. They kicking ass out there. Let's listen to a little bit of this. Power Sports Arena, the ATV maker has inked a 10-year exclusive deal with electric motorcycle player Zero Motorcycles to produce an EV option in all of its core segments by 2025. Joining us now to discuss is Polaris Chairman and CEO Scott Wine. Scott, good to see you. I can't say I'm surprised by this. Uh, you're no stranger to making deals. You bought a big boat business for over $800 million a few years back. Why did you target in on zero? What are they doing that other companies in the space aren't? Well, Brian, thanks for having me on. I mean, our boat transaction is doing extremely well and certainly the pandemic has helped, but uh, Bennington is continuing to gain market share and do, do well. But, you know, we looked at our portfolio and, and realized that even though over the last decade, we've sold a billion dollars worth of electric vehicles, we'd never delivered the power and performance and range um, and even the price point that our customers in our core power sports business really wanted. And so as we saw the electrification of automotive expand, uh, we started looking for a, a partner and uh, we looked at a lot of different options. And, and quite honestly, as we looked, there was no one even close to being able to provide the level of um, 
innovation and powertrain support for electrification at zero can you know they're 14 years of um, in business of uh, 15 million miles of electric motorcycles and really um they, they figured out how to do it exactly what we need in an electrification um an electrical powertrain for our products so uh, not only is it great do they make great motorcycles but they've got a great cultural fit to deliver our customers the outdoor experience that they need um uh, with electrification I'm telling you what, now that's what a leader sounds like right there. Diversification, something that sadly Harley doesn't do. You know, remember when Harley used to uh, do snowmobiles, did, uh, what else did they do? Golf carts, they did it all. Just like Polaris is doing now, but they don't. Polaris has its hands all over the place. So if one of them are failing, they always got them backup uh, investments working for them to bring up the other one. That's why I believe in Polaris's hands, Indian is just killing it. You know, because Indian went through a bunch of owners before, they failed, but under Polaris, baby, they are going strong. Let's listen to some more. Scott, uh, did you get the opportunity to take a stake in Zero? Uh, I, I've been following Zero for, for some time. They are clearly known uh, as the Tesla of motorcycles. Did they offer that up to you, or do they want to go public? No, I mean, I'm not going to talk about what their long-term plans are. They've got a, a long-standing relationship with Invis and a great partner backing them. And, you know, we certainly believe that this is a value-added transaction for both them and for us. And, you know, interestingly, as we looked at the various options of making something work, uh, neither they nor us saw the need for uh, an equity stake. We realized that, that we can create a contractual uh, agreement that really is beneficial to both parties, and, and we think it's going to enhance the value of Polaris um, and uh, Zero at the same time. Oh, yeah. You know what? He is so right about the Zero being the Tesla of motorcycles. You know, that's why they were not worried when Harley-Davidson came out with their live wire, because they already knew Harley-Davidson couldn't compete in the electric market. Couldn't do it. Scott, this pandemic has uh, caused great demand for your for your products. Talk to us about how you've been able to keep up with uh, with that demand, and have you been able to supply dealers in the way you'd like to? Now that we're a few months into the pandemic, thanks, Alexis. No, um, we're not providing. I, if you just surveyed any of our dealers, they would tell you they want more product. Uh, really proud, though. The team has worked through um supply shortages from our some of our critical suppliers and ports being shut down but really uh, our factories have been running at almost full speed the entire time um we just haven't been able to keep up with the uh, the incredible demand but ultimately uh, we feel good about where we are and, and interestingly demand continues to be strong throughout the quarter so um uh, the boat business is doing really well motorcycles is doing uh, extremely well and and really we're bringing in a lot of new customers and we believe those new customers are likely to be those that would prefer this electric option when we make it available late next year. No. Nope. Rock and roll, man. So they're going to make that electric available next year. He doesn't talk about the motorcycle part of it, but he's talking about uh, the ATVs, I believe. If I'm not mistaken, I might be wrong. He's talking about their other lines that Polaris has. But did you notice he said the motorcycle business is going through the roof for them? Not such the case with Harley Davidson. Not such the case. Their uh, last quarter earnings were way down, way down. I think they it's time for them, uh, you know, truly to diversify. Because if they don't, man, they're going to be left out, uh, you know, <laughs> by themselves, man. Why everybody else is going skyward, they're going downward. I think that this CEO of Polaris, which is 10 times bigger than Harley, because they don't, they don't only own uh, the Indian motorcycle line, but everything else. So, one more time, let's listen a little bit. We have one of our producers is a motorcycle driver, and uh, he said, you know, the, the EV idea excites him, but he's, he's like, you know, I don't know, what does it mean for a longer road trip. I mean, that's a consideration because you need the infrastructure there, right? In case you're out on the road and need to recharge. So how do you convince those uh, bike drivers that this is the right way to go? Well, you know, we've got some experience. We own Bramo for a while, so we understand how difficult it is in electric uh, motorcycles uh, specifically. And that's why part of the reason we're impressed because Zero's really started to figure some of those things out and uh, decrease that range anxiety as they give them a little bit more time on the road. But 
But part of the reason that we're starting with our off-road vehicles is because the customer use patterns, whether it's multi-acre homeowners or um, you know farmers or ranchers that are going to be going out for the day, they fit within the range that we're going to be able to provide with these uh, these first vehicles. So we're really excited about where we are. Um, certainly the infrastructure, as you've seen in automotive, will continue to expand, and that will create more opportunities for us in our on-road business. But right now, we think in off-road vehicles and snow, we've got a, a great opportunity to um, to create some um, value for our customers and shareholders. Oh, man, that is just a brilliant idea, man. Stay away from the on-road stuff. Only deal with the small sector of, you know, the off-road, snowmobiles, you know, the ranchers. Man, does these these guys, players, you got it going on there, buddy. You do, man. Now, that's a CF, uh, CEO. Woo! Uh, rock and roll and getting in bed with zero. That was the best thing you can do. Uh, this next article was about that. Uh, over a breakfast of eggs and buffalo sausage, Scott Wine, you're the man, baby. CEO of Polaris, the motorcycle, snowmobile, and off-road vehicle maker, was giddy. And I would have been giddy, too, going in with zero motorcycles. Uh, let's see here. An e-bike. And you know what? It was launched from a Santa Cruz garage. That is awesome, seeing the American uh, dream going like that. Well, what did I uh, keep telling my board is that it is, gives us instant offense. <laughs> I love it. Go on that offense, baby. If we do it ourselves, we're four years away and probably $50 million in operating expenses. A couple weeks later, Wine inked a 10-year exclusive supplier agreement with the 14-year-old company. You got to remember, Zero has figured it out. Some of their bikes go 350 miles on a charge with those extended packs. And I'm sure with zero, they're going to find a lot more going on as they work. They'll probably get these up to 500 miles knowing them. But a 10-year exclusive supplier agreement, that is huge. They can only sell to uh, Polaris now. Holy cow, they just kicked the shit out of Harley. <laughs> wow. Uh, unbelievable. Uh, and what's even more thing, uh, we go out to uh, Sturge's Indian Motorcycle. They are holding uh, two uh, days a week a job fair because they can't, they got to hire more people. That's a good thing. Take a look. Today was the first of a series of hiring events at Indian Motorcycle in Sturgis. Despite COVID restrictions, bikers have still been able to enjoy the open roads through the summer. And to keep up with the rapidly growing brand and demand, the Sturgis location will be holding job fairs twice a week. The store is looking to hire for all positions, including a tech expert to aid in online sales. Indian as a brand is just growing all together. Um, so every year it's just getting bigger and better for us. And like I said, we're just looking to expand our team and grow the team. The hiring event will continue through the month of October on Thursdays from 3 to 6 and Saturdays from 1 to 3. Well, if you're in the Sturges area, get your butt over there and get you a J-O-B. You got to support a lady, man. Get you a J-O-B. Indian uh, Motorcycles hiring over there, man, that dealership. Go get it. Now, some good that uh, motorcycle clubs are doing out there. Uh, for W-O-A-Y, Brothers of the Wheel Motorcycle Club hosts Poker Run for Fayette County Special Olympics. A local it. motorcycle club holds a poker run to support the Fayette County Special Olympics. Newswatch reporter Jacob Comer meets with the club president to find out more. The East Plateau chapter of the Brothers of the Wheel Motorcycle Club has held a special poker run to support the Fayette County Special Olympics. The president of the local chapter, James Jarvis, says that they've been helping out the Special Olympics for years, but this year has been unfortunately slow due to the pandemic. Normally every year we do a big fundraiser for them and due to the COVID stuff we haven't been able to do what we normally do, so we decided, you know, poker run be a good way for everybody to still social distance and raise a little bit of money for a good cause. Anyone participating in this poker run donated to the cause and directly supported the Fayette County Special Olympics. Jarvis says their fundraisers typically have a decent turnout from the community and he expected this one to be no different. Our fundraisers turn out pretty good. We hold three or four a year for just for Special Olympics plus a couple others. Throughout the course of the year we're on pretty good track. I'm hoping to raise a couple thousand dollars, a couple few thousand dollars for Special Olympics. 
The East Plateau chapter of the Brothers of the Wheel Motorcycle Club have been partners with the Fayette County Special Olympics for 25 years. Jarvis says they've just been happy to help out where they can. That's what we're here for. We're here to help people. Anybody that needs a helping hand, you know, we're willing to help them. The Special Olympics allows people of all ages affected by a disability to get the chance to compete in sports and express themselves. All the funds raised by the Brothers of the Wheel Motorcycle Club directly go to the cause and have helped support local chapters. That is awesome, Brothers of the Wheel, and by God, West Virginia, baby. Gotta love WV. That's God's country out there. Way to go, guys. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, Special Olympics, huge, 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 man. Now, let's go to Corey Graff's Wall of Shame. NBC12.com. Officer kneels on a pregnant woman's back during an arrest in Missouri. Oh, Side of Kansas City it. Police yeah, Headquarters, people gathered in support of 25-year-old Deja Stallings. Cell phone video captured her arrest Wednesday night. An officer is seen putting his knee to her back as he handcuffed her. The most recent act of brutality of a pregnant woman, an unborn child is yet another example of the culture of brutality, callousness, and disregard for the citizens of our community. This cannot and will not be dismissed. This double assault on humanity. We are seeking to have the peace officer licenses of both Chief Rick Smith and Officer Newton revoked. Friday, police shared surveillance video showing an altercation involving the woman at a gas station on 35th and Prospect. Later, officers are seen trying to arrest a man and say she tried to hinder the arrest. The crowd then moves out of sight. Police said they arrested the woman for physically interfering with an arrest. The way the incident was handled deepening a rift when the city is calling for unity to address violence. We do not trust them and we will not work with them on those matters until we see change and movement to what is called real respectful collaboration and restorative justice. Yeah, but you have no uh, problems calling them when you need them. Anyway, Connecticut State Police Officer Arrested following alleged altercation with a girlfriend. Naughty, naughty. Connecticut State Police Officer was arrested Saturday on assault and other charges. Southernton Police arrested Christopher Russell, 46, of Southington, on charges of assault in the third degree, disorderly conduct, criminal mischief, third degree, and risk of injury to a minor. At around 8.30 p.m. on Saturday, October 3rd, police responded to Russell's home for a report of a verbal argument alleging uh, between Russell and his girlfriend, police said. The fight reportedly began at a wedding and continued when the two got home. At one point, Russell allegedly took a monitor off a wall and broke it. Amir. During the altercation, the girlfriend's uh, child was in the room. When arrested, the Connecticut State uh, Police were called to uh, collect Russell's cruiser and contents. He was released on a 5,000 non-surety bond and is expected to be in court. Bad, China Doll from comedy. Hollywood and China Doll Evening bad Show. Comedy. Join us Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube for some fun times and very interesting entertainment. See you there, boys. Yeah, don't go and uh, get over there and subscribe to the Hollywood and China Doll channel. The link is in the description box. Man, Indian motorcycle street in Harley Davidson like a redheaded stepchild, baby. They spanking that ass. Spanking it. Now, that is what a real CEO does. They go after what their customers want. They provide them with what they want. They don't provide them with stuff they don't want. Remember that, Harley. As soon as you get back to your core customers, you will start seeing a profit. Take old Hollywood's advice, will you? Take my advice. Get retro, man, and you'll see your sales go up. Don't go in the markets you're not liked in, okay? Your company kind of has a bad reputation among a lot of you know people in the lifestyle. Not only on-road, but off-road. See. Over the years, people, they always, and it's funny, it really is, uh, they give it out 
you know, rice rockets this, uh, the jet crap this and that. But when I come on and give Harley David some shum shit, they don't like it. What is that? It's only fair. Why are you getting all butt hurt? All I'm doing is trying to say, hey, you know, you might want to try something a little different than you have been. But no, you get all butt hurt. Butt hurt, but I'll never ride anything but a Harley Davidson. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's your choice. But that attitude isn't carried by everybody anymore. You know, people like riding what they like riding. Me, I'm a gearhead. I love all kinds of motorcycles. Love them all. You know, Jap, German, English, you name it. I love them. Triumph, I really love Triumphs. They're doing really awesome. Uh, but Indian motorcycles, they are getting ahead of the curve. And they are the trendsetter right now. Ink in that exclusive deal with zero. Oh my god, that just put all the rest of the motor companies 10 years behind, probably. Because a 10 year exclusive deal with Polaris and zero every day is pushing the bounds on electric. And like it or not, guys, electric, it's the way of the future. You know, probably come 2050 when we're all in the ground pushing up daisies. Electric motorcycles are probably going to be the thing, man, because by then, what is it? can you imagine an electric motorcycle going like 1,200 miles on a charge or something? You know, I believe as technology improves, that ain't, that's an achievable goal. Now, a lot of people will probably say, you're crazy, Hollywood. I don't know, man. You know, you know look at Tesla, what they're up to, zero, what they're up to. Electric's really the way to go. I'm just saying now, a lot of people are going to be like, ah, oh, now I'll never ride nothing but a gas machine. Well, that's cool. That's cool. Come on. It took me forever to get on a fuel-injected bike, but that was a Boulevard, not a Harley. I still got my fat boy. That's carb. You know, some things I just, you know, can't get over that hump. I can't even get, you know what? I can't say that. I finally have. I love, you know, because me, and I'm actually going to be a doing a video on this, why I started wearing a motorcycle helmet, but I love my halves, you know, usually I wear those, you know, when I'm out doing my own thing, but when I have like China down on the back of the bike or something, we're going to get those uh, intercoms, and you'll have a radio on it, I was like, okay, I got to step into modern technology, okay, you know, I'm doing it, I'm doing it, I'm a little late, but I, you know, I get there sometimes. So, but big news out of Polaris, and that's the way a CEO runs a company, and you got to look at it. He has motorcycles, he has ATV, off-road crap, all over the place with Polaris. So they're diversifying, and I really think that's something Harley should consider, because their motorcycle line is uh, hemorrhaging at best. So why not put some other asset investment that's out there and get into some of the stuff you see Polaris doing good at? They're competing against you in the motorcycle market, but why don't you compete against them in some of their dealings? Oh, wait. <laughs> wait a second. What am I talking about? You slap a Harley Davidson logo on something, you want freaking 10 times the price that it should be. And I think that's really one of the problems with Harley Davidson. You know what? Your brand doesn't carry that much weight anymore where you can overprice and people will pay for it. Just saying. So that is the show for today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comment section. Uh, thanks for uh, you know joining in the chat room over at YouTube. If you're not subscribed, make sure you sit to uh, subscribe and the notification bell. Choose all. That way, over on YouTube, you can see when we release videos. Again, my video blogs are Wednesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Uh, the Wednesday one will be released in the afternoon about 1 o'clock. Saturday and Sundays about 8 o'clock. Make sure you like them, comment, share them. Yes, yeah, share them, man, because we got that contest going on right now. You want to win? Share, share, share. With that, I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one. Hi, I'm Hollywood. And I'm China Doll. Listen to the Hollywood and China Doll evening show, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all major podcasting platforms. And don't forget to subscribe to our brand new YouTube channel. Rock out.